So who's phone, who's in via phone? I am Deborah Cook. Deborah Cook, hi. I don't know how to get on the Zoom on my computer. Can't figure it out. Okay, well, you're welcome to participate entirely via phone. Okay. And we'll make sure, um, right now we're still in the getting everybody together phase. So when we, we'll make sure to call you. You said, um, did you say Sarah Cooper? No, Sarah Cooper, it's you. <laughs> Deborah Cook. Deborah Cook. How could I get those two? Let me write that down. Deborah. And presumably, Sarah, you've given me screen sharing capabilities. Yes. Judy will not be here and can't remember if Don said, I'm assuming Don's going to be here. Give him a I see. Hey there, JD. Hi there. You were able to drop off the plans at town offices. Yes, I did. Awesome. I'm in a turnpike rest area on the mass pike. Hopefully I don't lose signal. <laughs> okay. My uh, college roommate's father passed away, so I'm headed to Brockton for funeral services tonight. So, oh, bummer. Sorry. Yep. Which rest area are you in? Herbridge. Oh, okay. All right. It's a good one. Okay. I'm just. I'd like to give Don our chair another minute or two to join and if not I'll just I'll just share the I'll open the share. Yeah. So who then is comes in on iPad two? Sarah, you're reaching out to Don. Maybe. Don will be joining us momentarily. Yeah, okay. very good. Yeah, so the besides JD and Deborah Cook, there's somebody else coming in on an iPad. Can you, we can't hear you if you're out there. Can you speak up? There's Mary. Hello. <clears throat> Thanks for your answer to the question about the mysterious form seven. <laughs> Cleared that up anyway. <laughs> yeah, just for, again, we're still just getting organized here. Don's gonna join. Um, I sent the new zoning maps to the town clerk to submit to the attorney general uh, and and the town clerk asked me for form seven. No idea what that is, but thank God Mary does. So, <laughs> so there's a form seven. What what does form seven do, Mary? It gives the attorney general's office all the dates about 
when hearings were held, when the advertising for hearings was uh, printed and, and published. And uh, anybody who needed mailings, there are several people at state level, FERCOG and someone at the state level that need to be notified also. And a uh, couple of other things that don't usually pertain to us, like when the select board uh, first presented the idea for this, I mean, usually it's the planning board, not them. So it's, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. That's great. It would be wonderful if um, once you have prepared a form seven. I'll to, certainly you know, send you one that had crossed my mind too. <laughs> yeah. So we can save it for the record in our, on our shared drive. So, you know, something exciting, a form I've never seen before. <laughs> Why I consider that exciting. So Don, are you on yet? Let's see. Other people who've joined. All right. I, I'm uh, I'm a reporter with the reminder, and I will be recording the meeting. Okay. So we're recording the meeting too, so that should be fine. So this is. Um, could you just identify yourself by name, please? Yes, my name is Doc Prine. I'm a reporter with the reminder. With the reminder. Yeah, not that recorder place. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so this is the reminder. And where yeah. is the reminder based, if I may ask? Um, East Hampton, or uh, yeah, East Longmeadow and Westfield. Okay. Wow. Who well, knew we have that 13 the reminder? Editions. Yeah, based we have 13 editions and you're in one. So I cover you guys and I've been around for almost two years now. <laughs> okay. I don't know that we've seen you at one of our meetings, but they are known to be very exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> throughout, throughout Franklin County. Okay. All right. Um, tell you what, I'm sure Don is going to join, but why don't I just, um, it's now 5.06 p.m. Do we, have, do we have a quorum without Don? Uh, we do, the three of us. Okay. You, me, and Sarah are a quorum out of five. Okay. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Um, and I'm assuming Don is going to join soon enough that he will be able to engage and, and participate in the vote as well, if he had any questions that he missed. OK, so, um, so I'm going to uh, serve as uh, chair pro tem. Uh, it's 5.06 p.m. and I will open the public hearing on a site plan review for J uh, J.D. Ross LLC uh, for construction of a, a new structure on Egypt Road, parcel 6004-3. Um, so, J.D., what we typically do is at the start of a site plan review, give you, the proponent, a chance to, you know, we've seen the documents, they're posted publicly, sort of in your own words, tell us a little bit about the site plan. Um, I, will sh I will share my screen and you can direct me since it's probably hard given you're sitting at Sturbridge to put things up on a screen and that sort of thing. So if you just tell me what you wanna show when, so you'll kind of give us a little thumbnail sketch of your plan. Uh, then I think what we typically do is open it for comments and questions from um, uh, you know res other you know, non-board members, and there are two or three people here, and when we and then we'll end with questions and so forth okay. from the board. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So floor is yours, JD, and if you want me to put up your. Thank but I'll you. probably share my screen by mm -hmm. default. I'll just put up your site plan, but we can sure. put up anything else that you want. Okay, so I've got a, the building is roughly 96 by 48, um, story and a half, 
commercial building and the commercial zone for my contracting business. Um, the half story would be above my wood shop and above a rental space, um, just for storage of my tools. There's, we don't have any materials that come to the job site from um, job site, uh, from the job site. There's no storage at the shop. Everything goes to the job sites, gets used, the leftovers get brought back. So the only thing would be was tools um, and maybe a box of nails or two or three. Um, and I have a couple of trailers. Um, I have six vehicles, but four of them are, are employees that take them home every day. So we would maybe park a truck or two inside the building. I don't foresee any vehicles being outside the building at all um, at night, pretty much ever. I'd like to park maybe a trailer to behind the building where it could be hidden from view. Um, to my west is the railroad and a big mound between um, Muffins Market, and across from me is a swamp that's unbuildable, and to the east of me is Walter Thayer's property, and that's all wetland, and it's screens, so there's no line of sight issues, and behind me is Deborah Cook, and it's, um, she has frontage on Long Plain Road, so nothing can be built there unless she wanted to go back a thousand feet, but that's her land. Um, behind that, I think, is Mr. Glunka owns the land, and that's farmland down there. Yeah. Um, so there are no um, line of sight or issues where people can see it. We'd have some screening out at the street. There's some trees on Egypt Road that need to come down, but those trees need to come down anyways because the Waitley Water Department is putting in a water main on that side of the road right where the trees are. Okay. Um, we propose to re replant some new trees um, and the, the water main has to be on that side of the road because there's an AT&T easement on the other side of the road. So it's gotta be on the south side of the road. Um, there's a delineation mark uh, of the wetlands that was mapped, which pretty much like bisects my property and I need to stay 50 feet away from that. I've been to the Conservation Commission, had hearings with Scott Jackson and company, and they've approved me for the work that we wanna do here. So we're outside of the wetlands buffer zone. Um, the front drive will be paved, the back will be millings, hopefully gets paved at some point. We'll probably have a little small dumpster for the small amount of trash that we generate. Um, but there's no like construction dumpsters there or anything. Um, again, all material from job sites, this waste goes right to the recycling facility. It doesn't come back to the shop. Um, it's going to be beautiful, asphalt shingled roof, vinyl sided, nice doors. It's not open to the public. There's no, um, there's no public access. There's no retail sales. There's no customers. It's just my guys going there to get some tools as needed. Our operating hours are pretty much seven to four, four thirty, five days a week, but we are in the snow plowing business and we are do 24 hour emergencies. You know, a tree lands on someone's house, there's a flood or a fire or something, but those hours outside the normal operating hours are very, very infrequent. Um, there's no loud trucks coming in. I don't have any big heavy trucks. It's pretty low impact to the neighborhood. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of soft lighting on the outside of the building shining down. So there's no, uh, this is the quiet sky, quiet light sky initiative. So we're trying to, uh, no spotlights shining everywhere. Uh, is there any questions for me? Uh, you said we're gonna- Hold on oh, a second before, <laughs> hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll yep. get there. I just have a few quick, um, before we open it up for questions from- yep. um, uh, residents and so forth. I just want to confirm a few things sure. from their site plan application. Yep. So um, the use that you're proposing is business service and supply service establishments. Correct. Um, and, and then, you know, and where the work would be conducted entirely within a building. Correct. Um, and you know, you've, if this is not a home occupation, uh, and there are no, there, there are no, I think you mentioned this in your letter, there are no plans or expectations to be doing anything within the building that would involve any hazardous materials. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Correct. Could you say a little bit uh, just about the kind of, like the kind of machinery and work? I mean, basically the thrust of my question, get a little understanding of what's going on in the, inside the building. You know, I think you're not, you know, 
you're unlikely to uh, disturb any neighbors. But I'm thinking yep. about things like noise and stuff like that. So I just want to get a sense of what might be going on inside the building. Okay, so I'm going to have um, a wood shop in there, but it's going to be used very, very infrequently. I mean, I don't think it'd be used more than a couple hours a month if we had to mill some stock or something. Just to place in a big saw. Um, we don't have a cabinet shop, production cabinet shop. It's pretty much, you know, we do make some trim or make something. We can do that in that area. Um, I have some scissor lifts. I have a telehandler. I have so many tools you can't believe. Saws and grinders and core drills and welders and um, pumps and concrete tools and drywall tools. I have so many tools. It's just a place to keep them all under one roof. Um, that's what's going to be going on in the building. We're not building anything in the building. It's really just really storage. I want the stuff out of my backyard at my house. Sure. I want a central place to put stuff. I want it all under one roof that's organized and neat and orderly. And I'm going to rent out two bays to someone in my same use group. My goal is to find a one-man band plumber that needs a place to park his van at night that's safe and secure and heated and he wants to give me a few dollars a month for it. Uh, no outside storage, no employees, no customers, right. no junk outside. Right. Everything contained within the building. Right. Great. Is it fair to say that based on everything you've said that you wouldn't have those parking spots in front except for the fact that they're required by zoning? Correct. Saruta put them on the site plan with a handicap space because he took the occupancy level of the building, number of my employees, and said, this is how many spaces you have. But I couldn't see more than maybe two or three cars at the most there an entire day. Everyone goes right to the job site. Right. All right. the guys report right to work. Okay. okay. Um, you could, I mean, I run the business out of my house right now, and it's rare there's ever a vehicle parked at my house that belongs to employees. Maybe once a year. <laughs> Very good. And this um, this use that you're proposing is just to state the obvious is allowed by right in Correct. the commercial district, and that's where this parcel was zoned commercial yep. back yep. in what 2021 by my records. Is that one? Yes, it was 22, 21, 22, last year. I think yeah. I have a letter dated yep. 2021 April about yep. it but it may have taken a while before that happened. okay it took quite a while to get it um so it's allowed by right from the zoning board i do not need a special permit my use is allowed by right um and as long as the the person that rents the space for me is in my same use group right then then that's acceptable it's just i can't i like i can't have someone doing any auto repairs because there's hazardous materials i can't yeah. have a landscape or i can't have stuff like that and honestly i have so much invested in this i don't want anything other than like a plumber or a little electrician or something like that um, that needs a little storage space. Okay, okay, that sounds great. Um, okay, so how we're gonna proceed, has Don joined? I haven't noticed. Okay. Yes. There's Don. Hey, Don. I don't know how much of, uh, uh, shall I just continue or shall we shift over to you as chairing the meeting? He looks like he's doing something. So, so yeah, I'll just keep going. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do next is um, open the floor up first to questions from um, non-board members, and then okay. we'll come back for um, other board members. And I want to let people who are on the call know that uh, when you speak, just please give your name and your the street where you where you reside, and also feel free if you would if you want to put things in the chat um, rather than speak or in addition to speaking, feel free to use the Zoom chat. And Sarah, will you be able to kind of keep a little eye on the chat in case things pop up that way? Yes. Um, so I think I heard. Deborah Cook, did you want to make a comment or question, Deborah? Uh, yeah, this is Deborah Cook. I didn't realize that was zoned for commercial. Yes, that um, 
that came up before the planning board. And I think, I think it came up in 21 and it went into effect in 22, but it was, it was presented at annual town meeting and approved. So this particular parcel was rezoned. Okay. Um, it bothers me that it's on the Waitley Aquifer. So I don't believe this, I'd have to look at the map. Does this lie within the Aquifer Protection District? I should know that off the top of my head. I, I think um, uh, we need to get it in the I don't think it is. I don't think it's in the Aquifer, aquifer Protection Zone. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. Remember, a few years ago, they wanted to put a junkyard out there. And I remember that was part of the problem that it was on the aquifer. So I feel like I, that plot where he wants to build is swampland and it's underwater naturally, but a lot of fill was put there so that it wouldn't be wet, but it's surrounded by water. Yeah. Well, it's clearly, JD, you've clearly had an engineer evaluated that it's buildable. I don't know if people are seeing on the Zoom. Uh, Sarah did when I, I brought up the zoning map. That this is the zoning map that we just voted on and approved at the most recent annual town meeting, and it's pretty clear to me that the delineation of the zone two for the water department, um, you know, comes within. Let me, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom this in so people can see it better. But I'm, it, it's pretty, seems clear to me that the parcel is not in the aquifer protection district. So let me see if this makes it any like Yeah, it's close. Um, I don't know if you can see this area, JD, that I'm-, I'm Yep. But, um, this hatched, diagonally hatched line looks like, so this is the zone in which protections for the water department, public water supply apply. And your parcel, since we can see the line representing the uh, railway line, your parcel is clearly not in zone two. The zone Correct. two is, established by the Massachusetts, now I've learned too much about aquifer protection zones. Um, so this zone two is determined by the state versus the, um, and based on a lot of science. So I think it's fair to say that this parcel might be um, near the edge of the aquifer protection district, but is entirely outside the aquifer protection district. And maybe there are other reasons why, you know, junkyards and so forth were not allowed that in this particular area at some point, but that's, that's not is this, build, this. is this building going to have a cellar? JD, will no, it? No, 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 no cellar. There's groundwater at like three yes, feet there down. Is. Yeah, there's groundwater, yes. high groundwater at the perk test is like three feet down. So no, there's no cellar. Hmm. It's a frost, frost wall foundation with a concrete slab floor. Uh, there, there's no basement whatsoever. Yeah, because you would make a swimming pool if you put a cellar there. An underground pool, yes. <laughs> a lot yeah. of places in Waitley are like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the houses on Little Egypt Road are, you know, in water. Yeah, I built Richard Thayer's house next door. And we found water at 48 inches. That's why he has a daylight basement and the house is picked up. Yeah. I so mean, it's already I, we, De Deborah, we had um, the wetland scientists come out and delineate the wetlands. And it's all been through um, the Conservation Commission. And we are outside of the buffer zone. I have a great big parcel of property, but only less than a third of it is usable. Um, so we're outside of the wetlands issue. That's cleared all of those hurdles already. Yeah. 
other questions? So, I'm not sure how far up the road the commercial goes. It, it does not go any farther up. The commercial zone applies to the entirety of this parcel. And then it continues on the other side of the railroad tracks um, right. towards Muffins and so forth, but it doesn't go further east along Egypt Road. And it's only on the south side of Egypt Road. I mean, this is a residential neighborhood and people have spent a lot of money building houses there. I just hate to see it become a mess. Well, that's part of why we have these hearings. It sounds to me that what JD is planning to do is going to have minimal impact on the neighborhood and will be entirely outside of the line of sight of neighbors. Yeah, I just, I hate the fact that it was changed to commercial. I wasn't aware of. Deborah, so it, was, maybe... it, was, it was voted on at town meeting. It was advertised heavily. Um, everyone voted on it. It passed the town meeting nearly unanimously. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember we did discuss this at the planning board. It's something that we, um, you know, considered carefully and doesn't represent uh, any kind of plan to uh, expand the commercial district down, you know, down Egypt Road or or that sort of thing. It seemed it seemed reasonable and appropriate at the time, given the proximity to the railroad and the commercial district, the ex expanded commercial district on the west side of the railroad. Um, um, Brand, Mr. Uh, Thayer had it for sale for quite a while, trying to sell it as a building lot, and no one wanted to buy it because yeah. it's not it's not suitable for a house lot at all. No, who wants to live that close to the railroad tracks in a swamp? Right. And a trash company across the street. That's true. Amherst, Amherst trucking. You know, is... They wash their trash trucks with powerful chemicals and it just drains down into that swamp on the side. I just don't want something like that again. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll we will when we get well, to we... There is no to... objection to this JD okay. uh, building. There could what objection could there be that would stop it? Yeah. Well, um, I said it's 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 a, a a valid and appropriate use within the commercial district. It is commercial, and generally speaking, at this point, what the planning board is trying to do is um, a, not so much stop it. We virtually never do that, but what we do is establish conditions to ensure and protect the health, safety, and welfare of the of the neighborhood and the and and the rest of the town residents. And so we'll we'll get to that. And there'll be a we'll be deliberating on what, if any, our conditions might be on this uh, on this. But um, generally, we make sure that it, it it adheres to all the zoning rules, which it. So far, as far as I can tell, it seems to, but we have, you know, we're still, we're only early in the conversation today. Are there other questions? Think, go ahead. I don't want to see commercial go any farther up that road. Understood. And I, and I don't think right, that's any risk up. tonight. Okay. I'm going to hang up. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Appreciate it. Um, comments from anyone else who's on the call. Um, and apparently Don can't hear any of this. The sound system is dead. That was the chat. Um, I, it seemed like there might have been only one other. Well, maybe there is nobody else. OK. So questions from the board. And I guess I don't know if Don can. Maybe if Don can't hear, he can't chat. Um, maybe Sarah, you could chat Don to see if he has any questions he wants to pose via chat. Cool. Tom, any comments, questions from you? Well, I think JD's done a nice job with this. Um, 
I just want to pin down who the potential renters might be. Be, be specific about who, who the renters could be. That can, that can change over time. And we should have something on the record that codifies what JD presented. Tom, I believe that I just have to rent to someone in that existing use group yeah. that follows the same rules that I have. Because anything outside of the use group, use group, I have to come back to the planning board for site plan review because um, I'm changing the use of the property. So that's, we, we went around this when I first proposed this commercial, any commercial use could be in here, a restaurant, uh, all sorts of things. But I, when they change the zoning to commercial, it opens up to all those. I'm just applying for the use of my use within that commercial um, with my site plan review. So it's, they can only be in my use group, someone in there. N nothing outside of that. And I expect we would, Tom, just even though that's, you might say, I don't know how obvious yeah. that is, but I think we'll put a condition in to just articulate that. Yeah, I'm, I, I've been in business for 24 years now, this, um, this May, this month, and um, reputable business. I just want the stuff out of my backyard. I'm just trying to have a place to put all my things. Yeah. And if I, if I can rent out a couple of bays to a like-minded plumber and electrician and make a few bucks to offset the mortgage, I got to do that. Um, maybe my business will go to the point where I don't need the rental income on it. I hope that's the day someday, but um, no, I, I have so much, I have so much investment. I don't want a nuisance customer, a nuisance uh, tenant with their stuff all over the place, making a mess, being loud. I don't want any of that stuff. I don't JD, want I think you're, you're on solid ground, JD. You're, you're, yeah. you're, okay. You're doing fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, and I just want the condition. It's there. It's obvious. And we know Scott goes above and beyond. We just need to confirm that Scott has approved where the wetland delineation is. That's my other thing, so. Okay. Yeah, I have a I have a document from the Conservation Commission for the request of determination of applicability. And so, they JD, it to me, they approved you're, it. You're right on, JD. I know it's just okay. it's such a sensitive spot. Yeah. So it's just it. in there for note. Yeah. Uh, not a problem. Yeah, yeah, your plans were terrific and very conscientious. And I know Scott does, yeah. That's great. Scott, Scott. I had a little scare the other night so when lucky. people were retiring. <laughs> yes, I couldn't believe he mentioned that at town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did have a few questions. So sure. um, could you say anything about sort of storm water and snow removal management on the premises here? How would okay, you so, so what we're planning to do is push the drainage towards the railroad ditch on the west side of the property. Okay. The water already kind of goes that way, and that's the general direction that we're going to take that water to towards the railroad ditch. Okay. Um, and that drains to the south. Okay. I cannot drain water to put any more water into the wetland. It's not allowed. Right, right. So I would say 85% of the snow is going to go to the west side of the property and we're going to push into the drainage ditch and let it melt off naturally. And that slope is going to be uh, rip wrap stone because I'm terrified of fire from the railroad. So it's going to be a whole stone mulch bed all the way down to the side of the railroad ditch. Um, okay. I, I don't want a spark to get flown and have my building burned down. So very minimal snow is going to go to the east side of the property that goes to the wetland. And there's already a, like a, there's been some fill added and the natural layer level is already there. And that lower level is where the wetlands, the, the buffer zone is. Yep. So the only thing that I can do that is pretty much mow it and keep it grass. That's all that I can do. I can't store any trucks there. I can't build there. It's, it's a buffer zone. That's what it is. Okay. okay. Um, the other Indeed. question, I was a little confused. Oh, Don, do you yeah. want to um, I, As I recall, that, that land slopes away to the south. Is that right? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, the, the land along the road slants away to the south. Well, hold on. Don is in there to what somehow is coming in on two different sound systems. So how do we mute one of them? Oh, he's gone. That, that should be good. Yeah, good. Go ahead, Don. 
Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay. So you want to repeat your question to JD, please? Yeah, as I recall, JD, the, the disc that's on the other side, on, on your side of the uh, tracks, slopes away to the south. It does. My lot is going to, my, my building is going to be level, but this, we're going to pitch the water, maybe a, a storm drain or something, or downspout leaders to collect it. And we're going to put it towards the railroad ditch. And the work, uh, there's no culvert under Egypt Road. Right. Uh, at the railroad crossing and all that that ditch drains to the south towards mrs cook and jim glunk's right. property it has right. to the that's south. where, that's where i would being down in there yeah that's where all the water is going to go okay. and eventually the, the the wetland that's on the east side of my property between me and richard fair that yep. water leaks across so to speak mrs cook's property behind me and goes to that ditch that goes to the south that's what that wetland drains to. Right. So I'm I'm happy with uh, with all the drainage problems at this point. Okay. Could you just remind me whether this is this is or will be on public water? It's going to be on public water as soon as the town puts the pipe in. Okay. Okay. And that's happening. That's ongoing. That is in the works. The town has got the engineering for it. They've got the money for the pipe. They're trying to figure out when they're going to start running it down because. I need the town water active to get an occupancy permit. Right. Do you happen to know if they found a way to connect the water supply lines on the other with between Egypt Road and the other side of the railroad tracks? They are going to jack the pipe under the road. They're working on that right now. The engineering was they were out there. It was like Berkshire Design Group or something was out there within the last month or two taking measurements and stuff like that. So that design is in the works right now. That's, that would be huge because there are other issues with having the public water line running up partly up Egypt Road and ending and sort of creating a little Correct. backwater. Correct. Yep. So I've talked to Wayne Hedkowski, the water superintendent, and I've already offered to give him the five grand my tie-in fee. So <laughs> it's quite possible they're going to run the pipes down to my property and end it and then go under the railroad tracks um, as funding becomes available. But okay. I will have water. Right. So right now, in terms of dimensional requirements, you're following the rules for um, commercial uses within lots without public water. Yeah. It will have public water. Yeah, yeah. I was a little puzzled at this. when I was looking at this plan. Um, I was a little confused about some of the columns, so I'll just ask for clarification. Um, in the upper right hand corner under the zoning summary, there's a column called regulation requirements is pretty clear. Then there's one column that says town regulations, another column that says required, and another one that says proposed. And I was trying to understand the difference between the town regulations column and the required column. Just I'm because, sure. yeah, like what's what what's the difference between town regulations and required i'm not sure i, I okay. don't know yeah because it looks like required is what's in the zoning so yes. in lots without public water the lot area has to be sixty thousand square feet and you're greater than that at 70 almost seventy three thousand. correct yeah so, so. and i have tons of frontage yes yeah, yeah. i have yeah. lots of frontage i meet all my setbacks we have lots yep. of green space. Right. That's right. And all that all that looks all that looks good to me. Yep. Um, other questions from any board members. Um, I, I just wanted to point out, Brad. So I intend to plant some trees oh, along yes. along the frontage of where the like where my grassy areas in the wetland. Right. I want to plant some trees there, but I'm going to do that in coordination with Keith Bridewell because I don't want the trees to grow into the telephone lines or the power lines above them. Right. But I'm going to have a tree buffer there. I'm going to plant some trees. Okay. So that the intent in some sense is to um, replace the trees that you remove. Correct. We're going to have some sort of hedge there in the front that he shows to block the parking places. Um, I want that to look really cool. I don't want that to look crappy. Okay. <laughs> My neighbor on State Road has 
the mulch and the stone and the high wood fence that looks horrible. I want something that looks really appealing. So whether that's a simple fence with some shrubs or something, or it's a roll bar for vites or something, I want it to look really nice. Okay, okay. And I believe I looked at all the different dimensions on the plan and they all seem to be, as you would expect, consistent with what we want from such sites. I think this is a win for the town. I mean, it's, it's a useless piece of property for a residence and the town will get some nice tax money off this and I'll be a good steward of the property. Sure. Okay. Any other questions or comments from board members before we potentially close the public hearing? We ready for a motion? Uh, hearing none, do we need a motion to close the public hearing? If so, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Seconded. All right, the motion is made and seconded. Um, I guess all in favor of the motion to close the public hearing, raise your hand, because I can Hi. see you all. Uh, Don, are you, okay, I think you, Don, Don joined. All right, so that's unanimous. The public hearing is closed. Uh, so now we will have a discussion about, um, so. We have two conditions so far. Yeah, and let me, hold on, what I'm gonna do, give me one second, just let me, um, let me do a new share. I've teed up a draft of, um, Let me see what I was trying to do here. Uh, no, this is not the. Sh hold on, hold on, folks. I was trying to. Let me stop that share. I was just trying to. I teed up a document, uh, which for some reason I'm not seeing. Maybe I'll just do this. I'm just going to share my screen and go to the, no, trying to get to, yes, this is what I was trying to get to. Draft conditions, hopefully people can see draft conditions. So we'll put other conditions ahead, but JD, note that the uh, Waitley Historical Commission has asked us to routinely put a condition here. Uh, it may be hard for you to read on your screen. I don't know how. I can see it. Yep. If any archaeological artifacts or remains are found during excavation, renovation, or construction, all work should cease immediately to allow review by qualified experts, etc. So that is a standard yep. thing we put in. Completely reasonable. And there is a separate standard condition we always put in uh, about the site plan must re receive approvals from all the appropriate boards and committees, which basically means things like conservation commission yep. and if it were if it involved ag, ag, and so forth. But um, yeah, I have to have um, board of health and conservation and planning board for this one. That's what yes. the building requires. Yeah. So because you're I, putting in a. And, and yeah, and this and the ground is going to let you know your your septic will be able to perk there. It has it has perked. Yep, I have okay. a part of this is the full septic design. It's perked. It's designed for the use, the occupancy load. It's all been so. Once I go through this, then my next step is going to file the permit applications with the Board of Health, Mr. Bushy, and hopefully he responds within six months um, to get approval. Okay. Very good. All right, so Sarah, you wanted to propose a condition. I had said um, just pending the, um, of course, the Conservation Commission approval because okay. of the wetland issues with this yep. particular lot. So and we have that, but I want it just clear that that one's of import for this particular spot. So Sarah, are you, are you okay with the 
what, what right now shows up is number three as addressing that point, or did you feel there was another specific condition? It covers it. Okay. All right. Because I think JD understands, and, well, and our minutes will show yeah. that we discussed the fact that by conditioning the approval on that the fact that this site plan must receive approvals from all the appropriate boards and committees, we mean conservation, we yeah. mean board of health, yes. and of course- good, we got the fire, we're good. Yes. Would, you, would you like me to send you the file from the Conservation Commission to attach to this for the record? Uh, it's not necessary. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, I think we did wanna have a condition that just says, um, um all tenants shall um be trying to figure out the right wording for you know in the same use yeah the use that i'm applying under yes i'm sorry say that one more time jd to that be all in the same use that i'm applying for under the same use group must meet the requirements of the commercial bylaw. Commercial bylaw. Go ahead, Tom. I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Um, the, 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 um, tenants will, must meet all the requirements required in the commercial zone bylaw. Yeah, so commercial use, business service, supply service establishment, i.e. auto parts, office equipment, maintenance services, contractors, tradesperson shops, or craft workshops conducted entirely within a building, and it's not a home occupation. I took that right out of the Town of Waitley zoning bylaws. All commercial tenants shall um, Business service and supply service establishment, basically. All zoning requirements. I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to play around with this. I I don't have to wordsmith it. Right. It's on my. On. It's on my narrative and my proposal in there. The. What's it? Why well, I copied it word for word. Yeah, let me just see. I have your site plan narrative. It's on. It's a. It's a page on my letterhead. It's towards the end of the application. Yep. Yep. I'm getting there. Getting there. There you go. Okay. Next. Yep. Uh, the commercial use. All right. Right there at the top. Uh. When you where at the sorry, I'm just scanning. Scroll, the scroll up a little bit, Brant. Yep, yep. Building will include two tenant spaces that I will rent out. Yeah, then the next the next sentence. The commercial use. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Business service. I'm all. So I think what we want to say is something along the lines of um, all tenants professional be on the same business service business service and use and not make sense. All commercial tenants shall be in the business service. And I'll, just get, I'll just get that wording right from the table of use. Business service and supply service establishments. Does that seem good? All commercial tenants shall be in the business service and supply service establishments use group. Good. 
Okay. Um, we want to just say something about replacing trees. Could you say, JD, roughly how many trees you expect will need to be removed? Four to six, maybe. Some of them are small. One's a monster oak that is going to die when they put the water main in. Right. So that's going to come down. Obviously, I don't want to plant telephone poles right next to each other, but right. I'm going to repopulate that, that frontage line. Um, to the east of me with some nice trees. And, and I'm gonna consult with Keith Bardwell on this because right. he's the tree warden and whereabouts he wants them. He might say, JD, put them 15 feet on the property and put them there, or I want them right off the street. I, it doesn't make any sense to have them underneath the power lines. So wherever he wants them, I will put them. Yeah, you also wanna make sure whatever trees are aren't gonna lift your concrete. <laughs> right. Driveway pad. Correct. Applicant will make reasonable efforts to replace um, any trees, to replace trees that must be removed to accommodate new water mains. That's really what's happening, right, JD? You yeah, know? and I mean, I'm I'm having an entrance and an exit. So there's a, there's a group of trees that part of them are mine and part of them are town that we're gonna take down. Um, I think there's maybe only two or three town trees, the rest belong to me. Um, okay. But they're, the water main is going to go right through where those trees are. So when right. they rip those roots apart, the trees are going to die anyways. Yeah, right. Uh, maybe I'll just make this as most of this as necessary. So applicant will make reasonable efforts to replace trees that must be removed as, as a necessary result of construction. Yep. Which is sort of broad enough to include what happens with the water mains. Yep. Um, and tree replacements will be coordinated with the Waitley tree warden. Correct. And presumably these will be, you know, natives, not Norway maples. <laughs> yeah, they're probably going to be oak trees or spruce trees. I don't know, whatever he wants me to plant, I'll plant. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to say anything about stormwater and snow management. I don't know. Anything else that I'm that came up in the conversation that I'm overlooking? Don, how does this look to you? This looks good to me. Okay. Very good, then um, perhaps I can entertain a motion to approve the site plan for Egypt Road, lot 4.3 um, on, the, on, the, on these four conditions. Will somebody make that motion? Sarah is making that make, motion. I will make the motion to approve this plan with these conditions. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Seconds. No okay. second. Okay, I'm gonna give that second to Don, even though it was pretty close. <laughs> Tom, Tom might have gotten just an edge in. Um, all right, so the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of the motion, raise your hands. Aye. You don't have to do voice vote. It's unanimous. All. All right, the motion passes unanimously. JD, all right, here's what's going to happen next, JD. Yep. Um, we are going to get this, I'm gonna work with um, the town clerk, execute the necessary paperwork, um, basically just have to sign, some, you know, complete our piece of the site plan application. So yep. that shouldn't take very long which could be like a few days. Okay. Uh, and I will notify you by email when you can pick up a, um, an original at town offices sign. Okay. 
I do I have to file anything in the registry of deeds? I believe you do, but that's, I'm not sure okay. how that works. I'll ask my lawyer. Okay. Yeah, that's, this is, this is my part of your deal. <laughs> the rest is, on, All right. the rest is on you. Okay. Thank you, JD. I think Thank you so much, Sorry guys. For your loss. What's that? Sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Off to Brockton. Right. Yes. All right. Have a good night, JD. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. folks. Bye. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so that's our public hearing. Uh, there were a couple of more items on our agenda for tonight, but given that I've been corresponding a bit with Judy about like town meeting and the zoning map and so forth, and with her not being with us tonight, I'm, I'm thinking I'd like to have her in the conversation. So I'll just give you, so I'm gonna suggest we pass over it, but I think I simply wanna socialize the following idea with all of you about the next steps regarding the boundaries, the delineation of the boundaries on the aquifer protection district. And thankfully, we didn't have any challenges at annual town meeting. I think I, um, so we have an approved zoning map, yay, with all the original aquifer protection zones, but all the improvements that were made in the process so assuming that doesn't get kicked out by the attorney general, it's now in that funny state where it's been approved at town meeting, but it's not really official until a 90 day, until we submit it to the attorney general and the attorney general has 90 days to review it and say whether it's okay or not. But um, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic about that. But I do wanna, continue to investigate this question about what the, whether the boundaries need to change and if so, from, you know, to what. And in mulling it over, I've been thinking that the, the, the best next step for us as a board would be to draft a letter initially to the water department or to the water superintendent laying out a set of questions that we have, because based on my informal conversations with Nicholas Jones, he believes a lot of what, you know, the, the materials we need are, are there, you know, in various people's hands. And we just have to get copies of those documents. And, and I can't even tell you what I think those documents are, but basically documents that describe the delineation of the, the zones two and three for the water department. And there is an unresolved question about why zone one has never been depicted. Zone one is this an area immediately surrounding the, uh, the, the, the wellheads it's big enough that it could be depicted on a zoning map. Informally, Nicholas has said things like, well, you know, it's really not a very large area. It's required to be on land owned and controlled by the public supply operator anyway, namely municipal land and not private land. And, and, it, and it was kind of an, an informal argument to the effect that there's no need to put zone ones on the map. But it seems like we'd like to at least research that question and, and make sure we know. So what I'm going to propose for our next meeting when Judy can be with us, and I think that's gonna be after the tree hearing. Um, I'm gonna circulate via email some draft talking points for such a letter and solicit feedback one-on-one -on -one from all of you on those talking points and about that strategy. And then we will be able to have a discussion about that you know, in our next public meeting. But I think we won't bother with that tonight. So we can have everybody on the call at that time. 
That would be my request. So with that, I'd like to propose we skip over debriefing on annual town meeting and also skipping over discussing next steps beyond what I've already said on zoning map and zoning map and aquifer protection zone boundaries. Any concerns with skipping those topics? Okay. Mary, where are we about minutes? February, whatever it was, is is almost done. Okay. I thought you were going to have it today. Uh, but it, I will address whatever is left of it at the tail end and get it out in the mail tonight. So we'll at least have it for the 14th. Okay. Very good. All right. We're starting to get to that point where. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, we're there. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we're at the point where a lot of deadlines are converging. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I May understand. was horrible for, for advertising and meetings, and June is all wrapped up with uh, financial everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. I, I have a question. Sarah. Um, there are two signed warrants missing. They, Amy thought she put them in the box. Um, she checked with you, Brant, is my understanding. Dawn or Mary, did you pick them up out of the planning board box? Nope. I, I picked up two things that looked like advertising bills to me. Is that yeah. what they were? That yeah, I, I would love to sign them. Okay. <laughs> I will put them back in the box tomorrow. Perfect. Poor Amy, so, I'll get to them. I'll sign them next Wednesday and I will let Amy know that you have them so to not bother the recorder for original bills again. Perfect. Okay. So presumably. Or maybe Monday night, I think I can get. Anyway, you get them back when you're in town next. I'll sign them and we'll be good to go. Okay. I didn't realize that was connected with anything other than paying the bills. I'm sorry. It's fine. Thank you. I'm glad we've tracked them down. Amy will be very excited. I talked to her on Sunday about it. So. Oh, okay. Okay. I And so I believe that our next meeting is going to be Wednesday, June 14th. So I counted that right. Two weeks hence so that we can do a public hearing with the tree warden about other tree replacements. Well, I will be in Spain, so don't expect me. But we'll have Judy. So Judy's going to be in Spain too? No, we will have Judy with us. Oh, we'll have Judy. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, uh, Dawn, if you have any comments about zoning or aquifer protection, please. Well, um, I think that there's been some discussion that I haven't, I'm not sure that I understand, but some of the stuff north of where the water protection for the old wellhead for the water district uh, that, that might be lifted, but that area is going to be water wells at some point if anybody else builds um, on Haydenville Road. And you know, at some point there's going to be building lots that go back into the hills and probably and perhaps a subdivision or two. So I think we should leave zone two and three in place for future use. So I have again, we'll we'll have a fuller conversation about that in the future. I had some feedback on that point from Brian, who um, which I'll share. I'll circulate that, you know, with email. So we again we can have some time between now and the 14th to think about this. And this is gonna take some time because that, Don may be absolutely right, that that's, there's a valid justification for leaving all the pr protections in place. I'm not advocating for redrawing boundaries necessarily. I'm really just advocating for asking all the questions of all the people who would be able to answer those questions so we can make a decision as to either to leave things, a fully informed decision as to whether to leave things as they are or change the boundaries 
And if we feel we need to change the boundaries, we have to have a basis for defining the, what the new boundaries are going to be. All right, so topic for the future. So maybe a motion to adjourn. Sarah's moving to adjourn. Second. Tom, do you want to do that? I'll second that. Okay. Okay. Yay. All right. All in favor of a motion to adjourn? Hands Yay. up. Aye. All right.